In this video, I'm gonna break down how I designed and animated the scariest thing that an animator can ever see. In the last video, we put together this mood board and collected references for this design using the wonderful app, Milanote, who graciously sponsored this video. It all started with this hand-drawn thumbnail sketch of the After Effects crash screen and then a horrified reaction to that. With, if you can tell, this is a lightning in the background. And I wanted to capture a traditional horror movie poster vibe and make it feel really painterly and dramatic. So while sketching this, I had Milanote open on my front monitor next to it. So I could see it while I was drawing in Photoshop on my Cintiq to the right. First, I blocked out the basic shape of the face using this frightening monkey toy as the main reference, which is made for children, by the way. Let's not forget that someone designed this and thought this would be appropriate to give to children. And I mainly copied this by having the eyes sticking out pretty far from the head and having those deep, dark recesses behind them. I made the mouth a similar shape where it's open and shows these clenched teeth in despair after witnessing an After Effects crash. So uh, please make sure to save often. What is really gonna drive the animation of this design is switching between two versions of our bat illustration here. So we've got one dark and one light one. And if we toggle them on and off, we can see we get a little bit of a lightning effect. And we're gonna push that as far as we can in After Effects to see the effect we saw earlier. And I'm keeping a close reference to our horror movie posters, especially these two down here. We've got one lit from below and then one lit from the right. And I painted these bats on separate layers as well to make the animation a fair bit easier. So now we have two designs for our bat, one which is dark, and one which is light. And just by flicking them on and off, we can see a bit of how we're gonna create this animation. So let's get stuck into animation. But first, a little bit about this video sponsor, Milanote. Milanote is a web app that allows you to organize projects in a really visual way. It feels a lot like working on the wall of a creative studio. For motion designers, it can be used to create beautiful mood boards, scripts, storyboards, and more, all in one place. It is the ultimate bird's eye view for your project. I love to use it particularly in the research and development phase for collecting references, organizing them into mood boards, and then showing the design exploration to clients and collaborators. It has become a really useful part of my workflow. Now onto the animation. For the eye melting animation, I did that frame by frame in Photoshop. So in a new document using the free plugin Anandesin 2 to get some more of those animation tools, and this kind of animation was relatively straightforward in frame by frame. So I really just drew a circle for the pupil and then every new frame drew it coming further down the eye and then repeated that for both eyes. With that done, we're ready to jump into After Effects. So I rendered out four PNGs of our original bat design, two versions of the background and two versions of the bat. So let's drag them into this comp. Now I designed these at 4K, so they're much bigger than our composition window. So let's press Control, Shift, Alt, and G to make them the height of our composition window. And I did these at 4K so I can scale up our bat a little bit without any loss of resolution. And then let's rename them so they're a little easier to see down here. And I've also imported that PSD file that we animated our eye melt on. So let's drag that eye melt layer into our composition as well and resize that to fit the comp too. And now we've got our lovely eyes all melting. So now I'm gonna select our eyes and our bat light layer and parent those with the pick whip to our bat dark layer. And I wanna do just a tiny bit of animation of the scale of this here. So let's keyframe it scale at 50%. Let's maybe drag that to the end of our comp, which is uh, three seconds and then scale it up maybe 2% here. So it scales down very slightly throughout the animation. There, I think that's good. And now our eyes don't seem very well composited in. They seem a lot darker than everything else behind here because they are jet black. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is first, I'm just gonna drop the transparency or the opacity down to maybe 90% so we can see a bit of the color underneath. Maybe take it a bit further down, maybe 80% is good. Then I think that's a little more realistic. Let's change the color of our bats as well. Let's make them cyan so we know where those layers are. All right, now onto our lightning effect. So the lightning flash animation is gonna happen in two parts. In the first part, we're gonna change the lighting on the actual bat and the background. And then in the second part, we are gonna animate the actual lightning bolt. So for the flash on the body, essentially what we want to happen is to flick between the light and the dark versions of our image, really sort of turning on and off our bat light layer. And we want that to happen to our bat light in the foreground and a bat light in the background as well at the same time. So to do that, I'm gonna select them both, press T on my keyboard to open up both their opacity properties. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and click on the stopwatch next to the opacity on background light and that'll bring up the expression window and I'm just gonna grab the pick whip and pick whip that to the opacity of bat light. 
So now if we adjust the opacity of that light, it will affect the opacity of the background light as well. And that's really how we're gonna drive the effect by adjusting this opacity value. Now let's look at our lightning reference in Millinote to see how actual lightning behaves. Let's make this a touch bigger. Now, if we go frame by frame, just by holding shift and pressing our arrow keys left and right, we can skip frame by frame. So we can see when a lightning strike happens, there's a big flash where it's very bright and then sort of slowly fades down, which is a fair bit slower than it coming in super strong and super bright for the next flash. So let's head back into After Effects and let's keyframe this at the start at 0% opacity. And then a couple of frames later, we're gonna drag that up to 100, then a bit later down to zero, back up to 100 again and then back down to zero. Now I'm not being super exact here with the amount of frames because this is all really easy to adjust. Let's have a quick look at how that feels. Okay, that's not too bad. I think we need a bit more variation in the speeds. So really I'm just gonna play with dragging out these keyframes and moving some of them closer and further together to see what feels natural. There, I think that's looking pretty good with them a bit closer together at the start. So we get a few quick flashes and then a few slower ones. Now what's really gonna sell this is the sound effects. So I've downloaded a few sound effects from Epidemic Sound and I'm just gonna drop them into here. There, that I think works pretty good. Now first sort of lightning effects match pretty well with the sound here. So for the second one, I'm gonna copy and paste these keyframes. And I'm gonna try to match the second one a bit but I don't want it to look exactly like our first one. So I'm just gonna move these around a touch and see how that feels. All right, there, I think that is looking pretty good. Now to add the actual lightning strikes. So now let's create a new adjustment layer on our timeline by pressing Control, Alt, and Y, or Command, Option, Y as well on a Mac. And let's add the effect lightning. Now, before we adjust anything, if we just play this, we can see that this is gonna come in handy a lot. You can see it's generating this random forked lightning shape and we've got lots of parameters as well to change here. So we can make it branch more or less and at different angles. So there's lots of things we can change if we want a nice rolling lightning effect. I'm gonna turn these lightnings down a bit because they are a bit loud. And one thing we definitely wanna change is the start point and end point. So let's just drag the end point over here and the start point up to the right. Now let's check our reference in Milanote to get a exact idea of how this lightning behaves. So frame by frame again, we can see when the lightning strike happens, there's this big initial flash that sort of covers in a whole lot of the sky. And then we can see that flash sort of traveling down the lightning bolt. And then that lightning kind of just fades away until a new, new lightning bolt happens and kind of drowns it out. And by that time, that lightning is completely gone. But one thing we do notice is that the lightning doesn't change its shape really. Once this main bolt sort of connects with um, the ground, I guess, it stays in the same shape and just fades off. And there's just a little bit of random flashing in and around that area. So that's a bit different to how this lightning effect is working in After Effects. That lightning is rolling around constantly. So we want it to hold still in one position. And unfortunately, even with all of these parameters, we can't just freeze the lightning as it is. And I tried for a long time and I couldn't. So please let me know in the comments if you know another way to just freeze this animation. So what we can do is pre-comp this layer. So let's press Control Shift C, pre-comp it, and let's call this Lighting 1, because we always label our layers. And we want to move all the tributes into the new composition. There we are, let's drag that into our pre-comps folder over here, and let's change its color. Now let's go into that pre-comp. And this pre-comp is very long, this is 10 seconds. So let's shorten this by pressing Control K to bring up the composition properties. And instead of this being 10 seconds, we want this to be one frame. Let's click OK. Then if we go back into our bat scene comp, we have this one frame of lightning. And now if we right click and choose time, freeze frame, it will extend it all the way to the end of our comp. And if we play it back, our bolt is nice and static. It's a bit of a hack solution, but hey, it works. So now let's go back into that comp and set up the lightning how we want it to look. So first I want to change both of its colors to white, the outside and the inside color. So it's just one white bolt. I'm going to move the width down to let's say two, two pixels. So it's a lot thinner and maybe move the core up to one. And I'm happy with the amount of branching detail in this. So let's not adjust that. And that's pretty good. So let's press tab and navigate back up to our bat scene. I've got a nice thin lightning bolt ready to add some more effects to it. 
So first let's change its blending mode to add so that anything we add to it is gonna lighten the background, which is gonna be our next step. And then checking back within our reference, we can see there is a lot of glows around our lightning bolt. So the lightning bolt itself is illuminating the sky. So let's add some glow effects. So first let's just add a glow here and we're gonna stack a bunch of these on top to get a nice look that we want. So the first glow, let's leave its properties where it is. That's fine for now. And with that effect selected, press Control or Command D to create a second glow effect. Let's increase this one's radius to 25. Let's duplicate it again. For the next one, let's increase this to 100 and let's duplicate it once more and then change the radius to 200. There we are. And the reason why we're adding four different glow effects is so that we get a nice bit of a more natural fall off of the light here. So it's a lot brighter around the core of the lightning and then just fades off a lot more gradually and more naturally than just by applying one glow effect. Now let's animate its opacity. Let's press T on our keyboard, keyframe its opacity at 100 and then a little bit later, let's drag it down to zero. Let's drag it over to start where our first flashes start. There we are, that's not looking too bad. Now let's animate it shooting down at the start. So let's grab our pen tool from up here and with our lightning selected, I'm gonna zoom out a bit and just draw a mask which covers maybe the bottom half of the lightning. Now at the moment that mask is set to add, if we see down here. So we can either invert that or change from add to subtract. And then if we open up other mask properties, we can increase its feather as well. So we get a nice gradient happening here. Let's increase that mask size a bit. And now if we double click on this mask, and move it around, we can kind of see how we can animate this lightning bolt coming down. So let's go to our mask path property, keyframe that at the start, where it's sort of only showing the top of the lightning bolt, and then only a couple of frames later, let's double click and move it down so all the lightning is visible. And when we play that back, we've got a nice quick lightning bolt animation. Now back in our reference, we can see the first initial flash is really bright. We get a really bright flash here, and that is sort of concentrated towards the top of our lightning bolt. And then that sort of fades away. And then soon we've just got a static lightning bolt, which is kind of what we've got looking now. So we need to add this flash at the start. Now, the easiest way to do that is to do that on a new layer. So I'm gonna go up to layer, new solid, or you can use control or command Y. And let's choose a color that is a very pale purple, I think. Let's select okay. And we're gonna draw a mask again with our pen tool. I'm just gonna draw a mask up in the top right of our screen where our flash is starting. Let's drag that over to the start. Press F on our keyboard to bring up the feathering of that mask and drag that out a whole lot. And we want to change that to add as well. There we are, that's starting to look nice and bright. Now let's adjust that path shape a little bit more. So it's a little bit skinnier and it covers more of our lightning. Let's keyframe its path at the start. Let's trim the start so it starts at the very beginning. And then a few frames later, double click on it and move its path up to the right. Now when we play it back, we've got this nice flash of lightning where it's very bright up the top. And that kind of retreats pretty quickly as our lightning fades away. And this is all detail that really makes it seem realistic. And we wouldn't have gotten this detail if we weren't going sort of frame by frame through this reference here. So that's why I think reference is really important, especially if you're wanting to recreate something and making it look natural. At the moment, one bolt of lightning just isn't gonna cut it. We've got a lot more thunderous sound. So we need to make a few more of these lightning effects. So the first thing we can do is just trim these layers to the end of the effect by moving our playhead to where we want the layer to end and pressing Alt and then right square bracket. And we can trim that another frame back as well. And actually I can trim this top one even further back. And let's color that yellow as well. So we know that these are both the lightning effects. And let's actually drag them down below our sound effects so we can keep them separated. Now I think we want two more lightning strikes. So let's press Control D with both of these selected and do that one more time. And then I'm just gonna drag these over a little bit. So we get two in quick succession and then a third one with the last lightning strike. There, that's pretty good. But all the lightning is the same shape, which doesn't look natural. So let's go and change that. So to do that, we need to make three variations of this lightning wand comp over here. So let's duplicate that over in our project window by pressing Control D again, and it will name them lightning two and three automatically, which is very, handy. And then at the second flash, I'm going to replace this lightning one comp with lightning two. And you can do that just by selecting the layer that you want to be replaced, holding alt or option on your keyboard. And then if you drag this comp either into the project window or anywhere on the timeline and release, now this becomes lightning two. So let's do that for lightning three as well. So each of these are now separate comps. So let's go into each one. And all we need to do is change the random seed of our lightning, which will give it a different shape. So let's just do this until we find some branching that we like. 
There we go. I think that one looks pretty good and also very different from our first one. Let's do the same with our third one. There, I think that's good. And actually for lightning number two, let's adjust its endpoint to come over to the left here. So this is kind of going at a different angle because we see in our reference, we've got lightning going all over the place at different angles. It's not all going straight down in the same point. And let's actually move this second lightning um, behind our bat as well, because otherwise it looks like it's coming straight for its face. Now let's play that back, see how that looks. There, I think that's looking pretty good. And I think that compares pretty well to our lightning reference that we've been looking at. Now we could keep going through this video frame by frame and finding elements that we can replicate. But I think what we've got now is pretty close. And for our purposes, I think that's fine. Now, the last few things to add on this animation is I'm gonna add an animated texture over the top. There's no shortage of animated texture tutorials on this channel, so I'll leave a card for one of those over here. And on a new adjustment layer, I'm gonna add the effect posterize time, set the frame rate to 12 frames per second, just so it looks a bit more traditionally animated. And I think I'm also gonna add one glow effect over the whole thing and maybe turn down its intensity really low to just exaggerate these lining strikes a little bit more. Now this project vial is available to download for free down in the description. So please have a deep dive in there and I'd love to see you apply these effects to some of your own projects. Remember to save your work to avoid this expression on your own face. And thanks again to Milanote for sponsoring this video. If you haven't checked out that web app, I highly recommend it. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.